Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and what's this? We're back in Pokemon Yellow. That's right, we do have one last thing to accomplish here in the randomized world of Kanto, and that is the Unknown Dungeon, Cerulean Cave, here next, uh, next to Cerulean City. So, there is the legendary Mewtwo in the cave, of course. We're going to find out what it's randomized to. This is sort of coinciding with what I'm actually doing today in the real world, as you're probably watching this video. Although, if you are watching this video, I'm going to say, why are you not playing Pokemon Go? And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into here. But, we've got two encounters. We've got our general encounter here in the Unknown Dungeon, plus there is the legendary encounter at the end. So without any further ado, let's just do a quick little recap of our team as they are. We're leading with our fastest Pokemon, our level 53 Haunter Buster. The reason is, I'm just going to basically run away from all the wild Pokemon. I want to get to the legendary after we make our first capture, our randomized capture, all that good stuff. We have Psychic Thunderbolt, Mega Drain Hypnosis. Next is Blaze, our Charizard at level 51, with some pretty good stats there, with Flamethrower, Fly, Slash, and Cut. Next, we got Jiggles the Wigglytuff at level 50 with Body Slam, Tri Attack, Thunder Wave, and Mimic. Next is Point the Needle Queen with decent stats, I guess. Not, well, more, you know, more decent than uh, Jiggles for sure. Earthquake, Strength, Surf, and Horn Drill. We've got Articuno up next, the Legendary Ice Bird with the best special stat ever, 158. Blizzard, Bubble Beam, Toxic, and Substitute. And last but not least, one of our Hall of Fame champions. Beetlejuice, level 37 pincer, with seismic toss, bind, guillotine, and swords dance. Now before I go into the cave, I want to point out, didn't even realize this myself, but a viewer named Daniel Castillo pointed out, I've seen all 151 Pokemon in the game. I didn't even realize that, but uh, he did say that when we get into the uh, victory, or not victory, the uh, Hall of Fame, it did say we've seen every Pokemon, which I've never done in a Pokemon game before. Not that I can think of, anyway. Alright, let's pop on in here and make our way through this labyrinthian maze known as the Unknown Dungeon. We still have our surfing point here, of course. And let's see what our first encounter is going to be. Not that it really matters. I don't even need the items. I'm going to ignore the items. Let's see what our first encounter here is. It is a Tangela. Do we have a Tangela? I do not think we do, so we are going to try to make this capture. It's level 45. Uh, your defensive stat is your best. We're going to go with a Psychic. Let's see how much damage we can do. So, as I said, if you're watching this, the time it goes public, then that's all well and good. But you should be playing Pokemon Go, because one of the things I'm doing today in the real world is playing Pokemon Go. It is the Pokemon Go Fest today, Saturday. I'm asleep. We're going to use that Poke Flute. In fact, you know what? We're just going to throw a Pokeball. I'm sure we can capture this thing. Where are my Pokeballs at? There's no way it's breaking out, but it is the day that legendaries are likely to appear in the world of Pokemon Go. The reason this is a good time for me to go after whatever the Mewtwo happens to be, it's going to be legendary, I'm sure. I'll give you one last chance for a Pokeball. If not, we might just walk away from you. We don't really need to add anything else to the team. So we would have caught a Tangela. I kind of hate walking away from it, but no thank you. I'll forfeit that encounter. It is not necessary. This is basically, I guess you could call it... Not quite a filler episode of Pokemon Yellow because a filler episode generally bridges the gap between one part and the next part. This is the finale right here. Our legendary encounter. Oh, a Pidgeotto is in here. Don't really even need you. Level 55. Can we outrun you? Yes, we can. I should probably poke a flute next time we see something that we can survive some hits from. Alright, what is the path to take? I should probably have looked up a map of this. Ooh, a wild hero. This could be hard to run away from. Drill Peck will hurt also. But we still make it. Uh, yeah, so. Today is the day down in Grant Park in Chicago, Illinois. Wild wow, dragon there. In fact, we could probably wake up now. This is the Pokemon Go Fest down in Grant Park. I'm getting all sidetracked for these Pokemon. So, the way it works is... And I'll be doing a video, of course, of our Pokemon Go day. I'm getting sidetracked. I won't be able to do Pokemon going for the entire day today, but uh, I'll explain why. Anyways, the idea is in Grant Park, there are challenge windows where, for a half hour, the types of Pokemon, I think it's like the, the types of Pokemon that have the most captures, have a special feature that's going to unlock worldwide. So if you capture a bunch of electric types, I think it lowers the egg hatching distance. If you capture a bunch of uh, or is it water types, is boosted stardust. I can't remember exactly all the details, but the trainers in Grant Park, if they capture those Pokemon, 
then that sort of reward unlocked globally. Now, people all over the rest of the world, myself included, of course, we have to try to capture as many Pokemon as possible of any type within those windows, those challenge windows, to lengthen how long these bonuses last for. And if we can make a nice... So there's going to be like three levels, bronze, silver, and gold, and if we can get a gold level, you know, achievement for the challenge windows, it's going to unlock... Why am I going this way? It's going to unlock a special mystery event in Grant Park. I'm pretty sure they've said the mystery event. I might have misread this, but I believe it's going to be the first legendary raid encounter in Pokemon Go. Legendary Pokemon are coming to Pokemon Go in the form of these raid battles. So those in Grant's pa or Grant Park will have that challenge, first of all, if the rest of us in the world can capture enough Pokemon. And if the raid battle in Grant Park is a success, then globally, over the next, I think, two days, special events are going to unlock, and it's more mystery stuff. I think I've heard that will unlock legendaries worldwide. So it's definitely an interesting day to be involved in Pokemon Go. So, if you're watching this, pause the video. Make sure you come back and finish it, though, because, you know, you want to see what I get here as far as Mewtwo is concerned. Go pause the video. Go out, capture as many Pokemon as you can. If you're in Chicago, Illinois, or close to it, get yourself over to Grant Park, capture as many of these Pokemon as possible, and come on back and finish watching the video afterwards. Because it's going to be so cool seeing legendary Pokemon. I'm hoping my first one's going to be a Zapdos. Because one of my favorite legendary, my favorite legendary bird, one of my favorite Pokemon, I guess, in general, type-wise, it's only weak to two things, and if you use Roost Attack, it is no longer weak to those two things. It's only weak to ground. And who expects to use an Earthquake or something on a Zapdos, trying to predict that it's going to roost. Granted, I once predicted that uh, Talonflame was going to roost, and I managed to hit it with a Bone Meringue, so, you know, that worked out pretty well for me. But another thing I'm busy with today, in addition to the Pokemon Go Fest, is our Pokemon TCG Burning Shadows pre-release at the Heroes Beacon Pokemon League. So, that's going to be my afternoon, showing off all these new cards. I'm going to be recording a pre-release video for that as well. And as soon as that is done, I'm going to try to rush out, take part in the, I think, the last of the challenge windows. Did I go this way? I don't think I did. Oh, Vaporeon! You don't see these in the wild very often. I've seen Wild Flareon, actually, in one of my Pokemon Go videos. Again, you don't see the evolutions all that common in the wild. I guess they can call for help in uh, Sun and Moon. And I saw, I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers, Game Boy Luke, had a wild Eevee calling an Espeon for help, which was kind of cool to see. But anywho, we have our Burning Shadows pre-release, I'll be recording for that. I'm hoping I have enough recording space for everything on both of my phones, because I want to get everything recorded as much as possible, and try to do those challenge windows. Ninetales! Because it's going to be like, just I'm just so excited for tomorrow, basically. Oh, another big thing is... I, every two weeks, I want to start putting money into Pokemon Go, because after all this time, I feel like I kind of want to throw back some cash to those folks at Niantic for, like, making a fun game that's gotten me out and doing stuff, you know? So, it's a free game to play, but I like the idea of tossing some money their way. So what I do now is, I don't want, like, I like to get the free coins from battles, not because I want to, you know, get free stuff, but because I like the incentive to do the gym battle, because it's a fun thing to do now. So... I try to go for... There are two of the deals for coins in Pokemon Go that are your best deals. The uh, best one right now, of course, if you spend, what is it, $140, I think? You get 100 and, or sorry, 14,500 Poke Coins. The next best deal, you can spend... Is it a dollar? No, you, 99 cents, you can get 100 Poke Coins. So that's your second best deal. Personally, since I like trying to get the coins from gym battles, I purposely give myself the worst deal possible. I will buy, for I think $6.99, you can get 550 Poke Coins. And that technically is the worst deal because that's the most money per coin that you're spending. I'm okay with that, you know? Like I said, I'd rather work for the coins, but I still want to support Niantic in my own, I guess, limited way. So, that's the way I do it. So, yesterday, I did buy... Uh, 550 coins, and I went ahead and bought a few incubators. I increased my bag storage space again. I can have all 500 items, and I... What else did I get? Oh, I wasn't sure what else to spend my money on. I had, like, 200 and some coins left. So I thought, you know what? I'll buy a lure module, which I didn't even think of it at the time, but I can use it for the challenge windows for the Pokemon Go... Pokemon Go Fest, actually. 
And then I went to the trainer shop, the style, and I saw there's a really cool pair of jeans that I could get for my trainer, but they cost 200. And I had spent 100 of my remaining 200 on the lure, and I'm like, oh, come on. So I have currently 168 coins, I think, in the game. I've got two Pokemon in, some gems. If I can hold out until tomorrow, either one's going to bring me back 50 coins. So I can get myself a nice pair of jeans. Alright, anyways, this is it. This is the legendary encounter. I guess we'll just lead with our Haunter. We do have Hypnosis, of course. What's it going to be? So it's not randomized to legendaries, but what if this is foreshadowing of what's going to happen in Pokemon Go? Could be a legendary right here. It appears to be Mew, too. Let's find out, everybody. It's Caterpie. Wild Caterpie, level 70. It's like the Moltres Metapod all over again. But, being level 70, I will capture this. It resists Mega Drain. Let's just see how much a Mega Drain does to this thing. Well, okay, that was critical. I was going to say, wow, it still does that for being resisted. And take note of the fact that, despite being 17 levels lower, Buster's faster than this. He's going for tackle. All right, light tap and Mega Drain. Don't get a critical. Don't knock it out. I want to capture this thing. Excellent. We're going to go ahead and toss a... Pokeball. First, we're going to go for Hypnosis. In fact, you know what I could do? This being the legendary Pokemon that it is... Do I still have one? No, I was considering throwing a Master Ball, just for the heck of it. But we go Pokeball. It's got to catch it. Caterpie, the legendary, level 70, is caught. Oh, we don't even have a Caterpie yet. Look at this. Caterpie, the legendary worm Pokemon. If you touch the feeler on top of its head, it will release a horrible stink to protect itself. Give me a nickname to Caterpie. Well, we already have a Butterfree. What do we call you? Hmm. Let's go with this. It's Catoopie from you too. Alright, Catoopie is sent to the PC, and that's going to be our legendary encounter. So, I guess... Do I just want to end this? No, let's just talk a little bit more. I'm going to go surf on my way out of here. I'm going to try to escape the unknown dungeon as quick as possible. If I had Dig, that would be a lot easier, but we don't have that option. So, I'm looking forward to the, uh... There's something blowing around on the, uh... Oh, there's a Venusaur down here? We have something blowing around on the computer up here. In fact, you get out of here. I'm looking forward to the Burning Shadows. I've seen... Now, of course, they revealed on Pokemon.com. There are... Well, I only know a few of the cards. It is... Necrozma GX. There's Charizard GX. Top of Finny GX. And... What's the other one? Ho-Oh GX. Did they reveal that, or did they just mention it? I know there's another card they showed. This is gonna break my brain. Alright, let me just go over this. They revealed the Crowsman and Tapu Fini at the same time. Charizard and... Why can I not remember? It's not fair! I should be able to know this stuff. I have these news updates all the time. Anyway, I was going to mention how... I guess in a way... I think I probably said this before, but... I feel in a way sort of bad that... One of the things I like to sort of pride this channel on is... Giving you guys news updates from the world of Pokémon and, you know, all the new appearances as they happen. One of the things that I don't do is I look ahead for the cards that are coming out in Japan. Excuse me, in Japan. And there's Dratini down here, too. Like, if I want to give you the uh, up-to-date information, like the, uh, the earliest possible information, technically I probably should look at the Japanese cards and announce them as they're revealed. But it kind of goes against me as a fan, you know? I like to be surprised by things, and I, I like to not know exactly what's going to happen and what's going to come out in each new set of cards until I see them firsthand, like at our pre-releases, and what I happen to get in my own packs. So, it's sort of a double-edged sword in a way. It's the fact that, like, if I, if I don't do it, it helps keep things fresh and exciting for me as a fan, but it doesn't help me as far as a news presenter does, or pr pr as far as being a news presenter goes. But the other problem is, if I do bring the news out, like the Japanese cards, for example, then it is giving you guys the advanced information, but then it kind of hurts me as a fan, because I want to be surprised. I suppose one way to look at it, though, is 
There's plenty of other big channels out there that do cover all the stuff ahead of schedule. They let you know what is coming out in Japan as it's revealed. So I guess if you really want the advanced information, you'd probably check those channels out. Like, you know, I guess that makes the most sense. That way, I can be just as excited as you folks out there when you first learn about them. And I just love looking at the cards, seeing the text in English, because I can't read Japanese, I'll just say that right here. But seeing all the cards as they come out, being able to read what it says, and as soon as I read a new card, my brain goes into overdrive. I'm thinking, how can this interact with other cards? That just reminded me of a very heartbreaking bit of information that I received today. So, as I mentioned, the, uh, mentioned in the news update this past week, the 2018 season standard rotation has been revealed. So we know what cards are going to be in standard rotation, which means one of my favorite decks, the Mega Beedrill EX deck, is no longer going to be standard legal because stuff from Primal Clash is out, which means my whole idea of the... Is it the... Uh, nurture and... Nurture and Heal, I think it's called, the ability of Sceptile from Primal Clash, is not going to be available to help me accelerate energy onto my Mega Beedrill. So that's kind of a drawback. But, as I found out, like, you know, I could somehow just play the game or play the deck in expanded format, which is totally fine. Generally, the Heroes Beacon League tends to stick to expanded so that more players have more options. Do I go down? No, I go this way. I think. And so expanded is basically what we tend to use at Heroes Beacon. But the heartbreaking news that I got is apparently, because of game-breaking possibilities, the Forest of Giant Plant Stadium is being banned from the expanded format. I can see why they did it. It is painful. As a uh, Pokemon trainer likes to use grass types, Decidueye GX is another card I like to use a lot. It's going to really hinder me, but one thing I'm going to be happy about is not having to worry about turn one Vile Plume locking my items down. Because I've encountered that on a fair number of occasions, and I am not a big fan of that. It's a good strategy, don't get me wrong. Just one that I prefer not to go for, and... I like to use items, you know? I can't use items if Vile Plume locks me down, so... Eh, like I said, I'm kind of okay with the idea, like, there's other things where, for example, Mega Beedrill. It is pretty powerful if you can get it set up quickly, and the Force of Giant Plants allows you to get it set up pretty quickly. So, I think the official ruling says because a lot of powerful grass types... Well, the Force of Giant Plants allows for a lot of powerful grass type combinations, that's why they decided to ban it. And to someone was saying, why don't they just ban Vile Plume itself? Why not? Well, why take out the entire stadium? And I'm kind of okay with that, like if they were to do that. But on the other hand, it's like, I understand there's other grass type possibilities that are pretty bad. So for that reason, yeah, I gotta find other ways to try to get my Mega Beedrill into play. Or I could even just look for other cards that can accelerate energy. Why don't I combine it with Victavolt? That could be an idea. Anyway, I guess that's going to be it. Like I said, this is sort of a... Almost like a filler episode. Filler as far as the channel is concerned, because we don't have anything else for today. I wanted to have something recorded, because I know Saturday, tomorrow, my time, is going to be a busy day for me. Pre-release, Pokemon Go Fest. Recording all over the place, trying to get as much footage for you guys as possible. So I wanted to have something for you guys to check out today, if you're not taking part in anything of the sort, like Pokemon Go Fest, which you really should take part in. The more people that capture Pokemon, the better chances we have of all these special rewards all over the world. So feel free to jump out. Even if you haven't played Pokemon Go in a while, just give it a try. The more Pokemon you catch, the better for everybody. Tell what Professor Chaz sent you. Tell who? I don't know. Whoever sees you on the street. Anyway, so that's going to be it for Pokemon Yellow. I hope you enjoyed the legendary capture of Catupee. I know, I was excited for it. And if you want to see some more Pokemon Yellow, the entire playlist is linked in the description below. You can check out from episode number one, see how things got started here in the random world of Kanto. If you want to see some more videos that I have done, including such things as Pokemon TCG and Pokemon Go and all that kind of good stuff, check out the links during the outro to those videos. And to subscribe for daily Pokemon content, Click my face during the outro and get your daily updates of such videos as I just said, as well as next weekend, I believe, Sun and Moon Wi-Fi Battling should be back. I'm going to have footage for the Weakness Cup, which is Pokemon of five weaknesses or more, double battles. It's going to be crazy. You can only hold damage-reducing berries. You can only hold a weakness policy. I'm going to be interested to see how things play out. It'll be kind of fun. And I suppose that is it. I just want to say once again, thanks for watching today's video. Professor Chaz is going to sign off now. 
play Pokemon Go, get out there and catch everything you can. And if you're having a pre-release of Burning Shadows in your area, go there, have fun as well, and I will catch you next time.